All right, my friends, how you doing? Let's go ahead and take a look at how to code the rock, paper, scissor game using the Lego Spike Prime software. So we're going to create a new program. And once we're in there, we have our coding canvas right here with the default block that always starts. And we've got all our coding blocks sorted by color and categories over here to the left. So what we're going to do first is under this block, when the program starts, when you activate your code, we want something to happen right away. And in this case, we're going to add a purple light block and we're going to use the purple light block for write. And this is going to write a word. In this case, we're going to write the word left, indicate to press the left button to begin the game. So in this example, the game will not start until the player presses the left button to activate the beginning of the game. This allows you to sync up your Lego Spike Prime little build with your competitor so the timer and all that stuff happens at the same time. So now we have triggered here left. So now we need to activate well, what's going to happen when we press the left button. How do we get that to work? So what we're going to do is we are going to head over here to this yellow events block and we're going to look for the block of when the button is pressed and we've got it right here. When the left button is pressed, we're going to then create a section of code called start game. So we're gonna come out right away and we're gonna make our own block of code. So I'm gonna go here to my blocks and I'm gonna choose make a block and I'm gonna call this start game. And I wanna make sure this is all lower. So I'm gonna hit save. I also know that I'm going to be making two other programs using my block. So I'm going to go ahead and create those now and we'll come back to them. So I'm going to hit this make a block again. And I'm going to choose play again as the name of my next block of code. And I'm going to make one more called RPS for rock, paper, scissor to activate the randomness of rock, paper, scissor. So now we have down here, back to our block, when left button pressed, what do we want to have happen? We want to start the game. Now that we have that, this block here then will kick out and it's going to go over to this block of code right here. So let's go ahead and fill it in. What do we want to have happen when we start the game? We're going to start with some sound and we're going to play a saw sound bite until it's done. And in this case, I'm going to choose the coin sound. So I'm going to add a sound. I don't want the cat meow. And you can see that the library comes with a lot of already sounds pre-made for it, which is really nice. And I'm going to be looking for the coin. There we go. That's the one I want. So there it is. We're good to go. We can go ahead and X out of here. And now I've got coin added play coin until done. Then I'm going to go here to the purple light block. And we're going to start our countdown timer of 3, 2, 1. And then we know to activate our program to do rock, paper, or scissor. So I'm here going to do the turn on block. All right. And as opposed to a smiley face, I'm going to put the number three in the countdown timer. So I'm just going to change what lights are turned on and off. So there's our three. And I want it to be a countdown timer, so I want that at one second. Now, what I can do here is I could drag these blocks and do this two more times, going over here and dragging. Or I can right-click this play sound, choose duplicate, drop that down. And now all i got to do is just change this to the number two. And then I can duplicate this again and I can make this the number one and now we've got our timer all created which is pretty nice after that it's going to count down so it's going to start the game it's going to go here to this block and it's going to go three two one and now what I want it to do is I want it to start the game I want to I want to play the game so we're going to do a, create another my block called the rock paper scissor and that's what this is right here. So once we do that, let's go ahead and get this to start. So the way we're going to activate this to begin 
is we are going to just turn on the light again. But this time we're going to create a square in each of the four corners. This is going to let the player know that it's waiting to be activated. So it's just on, but it hasn't been told to randomly choose rock, paper, scissor. And the way we do that now is we're going to go ahead and put a wait until block in here. So it's going to sit at this code right here, staying on of these four squares in the four corners until whatever it is we put in here. And in this case, we're going to add the sensor block and we're going to do the shaken opportunity. So there's a block here. And so it's going to wait until the intelligent hub is shaken. You can see you've got other opportunities to change this tapped or falling. We're going to stick with the shaken. Once it's been shaken, it's going to then kick out to the next set of code. And so now what we want to do is create a variable. So we're going to drop down here to the orange variables category, and we are going to make a code here now called RPS random to randomly choose our rock, paper, or scissor. So I'm going to now set RPS random, and we're going to make this a random one. So we're going to go here to our operator, and we're going to choose this pick random. And we've got three options, rock, paper, scissor. And so we're going to choose this pick random one to three. So now this is going to make this variable either a one, a two, or a three. And then we need to put in some code here of what's going to happen. So first, if, all right, R, we're going to add this equal block in here. If our variable RPS random is equal to one, then what do we want to do? We're going to turn this on and we want to show paper. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to turn on our design for paper. And I'm just going to make this one a full screen. So I'm just going to choose this option right here. This is going to be my paper symbol. And I want to make sure that I know that it was activated. So I'm just going to set the center button light to red. And you can go ahead and change that to any color you like if you want to. Now, just like we did over here, I could go and drag all these blocks over. Or I could go right to the if block now. And I could right click, choose duplicate, drop this down. Now we can say what happens if the variable is 2. I don't want it to show the paper icon. I want to do a rock. And so in this case, I'm just going to take the outside set of lights out to symbolize rock. And I'm going to change this to green, just for a different kind of color showcase. And I'm going to duplicate one final time. And I'm going to make this, obviously, now number three. And i got to get my pair of scissors. So I think if I can go here, this kind of looks like a pair of scissors, maybe. Oh, there we go. There we go. Good old pair of scissors. All right. And this one, let's just make this the light blue. Now, at the end of this, we want to wait five seconds. You can make this whatever. Just so we have a chance to actually see it and compare against our competitor. And then we are going to indicate for the player to do something so that we can actually play another round. So in this case, I'm going to choose the word right. So now what happens is, what happens if we press the right button? So I'm going to come back over here to where we started earlier. When the left button was pressed. We started the game. It does a countdown timer. Then this triggers this code, which is now going to choose one, two, or three, which will then activate paper, rock, or scissor. But I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to drop this down here, and now I want to do when the right button's pressed. I don't want a start game. This time, I want to activate the game to play again. So, down here, once it chooses that, shows us our choice for five seconds, it's going to write the word right. So we press the right button, and now it's going to activate this play again code. And what we're going to do here is add a sound I like to add these sounds just because it helps make sure that we've got what we want. And I'm going to add a sound. Let's add some sheep. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and add this sheep noise right here. 
Let's cat meow. Let's make it a bop. And then we're going to go ahead and now go back and add some more, activate some more LED light code programming. So we're going to do this time, we're going to turn it on for two seconds. I'm just going to put the symbol of an X to know, to indicate to the player that the game's being reset, that we're going to do the game again. So there's the X, and then I'm going to turn off all the pixels, clear it all out, and then I'm going to have them write this word all across the screen called left. And when they do that, as you can tell already, when we press the left button, it'll activate and start the game over again. So there it is. Here is our code for chapter one on how to code the rock, paper, scissor game. I look forward to your designs and your ideas and what you construct and all that good stuff, your own symbols and your own games based on this. As always, feel free to share. I can't wait to see what you create. And until next time, my friends, stay awesome. Peace.